We've always wondered what life would be like in these little quirky cottages you'd see in the middle of nowhere. We'd cycle past one and just think how incredible it'd be to live there, but we'd eventually agree that in reality we probably couldn't make it work out. Somehow though, that's exactly where we've ended up. A remote 300 year old building sitting in the foothills of the sleepy northern fells in the Lake District National Park. And we're almost a year in. Hi. Hello. We'll give you a tour a bit later, but it's a proper little cumbering cottage. Stone walls, stone floors and a wood burner. Surrounded by sheep, a lot of cows and rolling landscapes. Home to many resident mice, two very new lodges and us. Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Sarah, and you'll get to know us a little bit more through this video, but I guess the key thing is that we moved here after a big curveball in our life plans. Yeah, and we had never really lived anywhere rural before or in a remote location. And the real big factor is that we don't actually drive. <laughs> no. <laughs> so moving here was a really big gamble. Yeah. We're seven miles from the nearest town or train station, and a hilly five mile ride to the nearest post office or pub. The result is we spend a lot of time on our bikes, which we actually really love. Home. We moved here in 2022, right at the end of autumn, and just as the last leaves were falling from the trees. Not sure what to expect really, but pretty open to the adventure and up for a challenge. You home. And over the last 12 months, that is exactly what it's been. An adventure that genuinely takes our breath away on a daily basis, but also a challenge. <laughs> so we're going to look back at how it's been through spring and summer in a remote cottage in the middle of the Lake District. Yeah, and it's quite crazy to think how different it's been compared to winter. And still, not anything like we expected. No, either. far from it. No. Spring comes with warmth, life, new beginnings. Well, I guess that's a romantic idea of it, but our spring came with this real cold snap. And I don't feel like this story would be right if I didn't include it, because as cold and as dark as it felt at points, it had a surprisingly powerful impact too. It's also what made the summer seem even more special. As a little summary, we really struggled to heat the building properly, and there were whole weeks where everything iced over, so it's sometimes pretty hard to leave the house. But I think we realise now that it was also a really important period for us. The cottage and location kind of forced this minimal lifestyle that brought us together and really made us appreciate the little things in life. Who needs restaurants, eh? <laughs> bon appetit. It was also absolutely stunning outside, and so we were constantly going off to explore, then rushing back home to shelter by the fire when we got too cold. There was a lot of beauty to it that we knew wouldn't last forever. And particularly knowing that you get to come back here and sit in front of a fire. Yeah, it's worth freezing to the boat to come back and get cosy. This constant process really made this little white building seem like a safe haven and it felt like, in a funny way, the cold had turned our house into a home much quicker than expected. And slowly the season did start to change. Slightly warmer, slightly brighter, days noticeably longer. It was pretty subtle, but it filled you with such an energy and optimism. So we'd also never had a garden anywhere near this big, and this is when Sarah really came into her own. Because it's kind of this house has been empty for a few months, the garden was quite overgrown. So I'm doing lots of weeding, sort of pulling up all the weeds. So I really want to kind of get all this done. So when my sort of seedlings start to grow and planting them out sort of this week, I can sort of focus on the veg and everything. Yeah, I'm really hungry now. Jay has been working on the computer and I think I'm gonna make some lunch and probably wash my hands. Uh, <laughs> so what does a beginning of spring mean to you as a green-fingered person? <laughs> a bit of like mania trying to get as many seeds sort of planted as possible so that they have their best chance of like coming into fruit in the summer, really. It was still pretty cold, but watching the garden slowly progress was really uplifting. This was also the time of year 
for one of the biggest events in the local social calendar. Right, what has been our, our big decision this morning, our big question? <laughs> to potato day or not to potato day? In a sentence, can you tell me what potato day is? 80 varieties of potatoes. <laughs> All these cars are for the potato festival. It's safe to say we have never seen so many types of potato in our lives. We've also never seen so many people this excited by potatoes either. Are we going to get some rhubarb? Yeah, we're going to get some rhubarb. <laughs> I just can't decide which one. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Happy planting. Thank, Thank you. you. How did you find Potato Day? I loved it, loved it. To it see cool. see you giddy and pink in the face from all the but potatoes. But wasn't it amazing to see all the different potatoes, all of the thought and effort and that like, goes into these potatoes? What a potato day. <laughs> I'm one happy potato. Bit by bit, there was more life around us in the cottage. And even though we rarely saw people, we started feeling a lot less isolated. Oh my God. We're, 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 we're waiting for a phone on hold. It's like, get outside and watch. With longer days, we started planning bigger rides and adventures. There are no shops around, so we're really lucky that we fix bikes ourselves. Though we did have to be pretty patient with deliveries. And Sarah has a rear brake again. Woohoo! Which means we can go cycling. This period was characterized by big, bold trips up into the hills in dodgy conditions. It's really windy now. It was character building for sure, but we were always very happy to get back home. See what? And though the days were brighter, it was still pretty cold and we were almost out of wood. When we first moved to this log pile was like from there all the way there and about like about that high. Wow. And we've just gone through it through the, the winter. They're real satisfying that it's all been chopped. It's all warmed us. And so you've got maybe like a few, a few more like chopping sessions there. With our fell tree supply almost out, we started relying on log deliveries. Yeah, uh, waiting for the wood delivery. They've definitely not found the house. They're taking the wrong turning. So that is life <laughs> all the time. People just don't find the place. So I've got to walk up into the up and try and find them. And yes, yeah, so there's no street lights around here, so as soon as it gets dark, you get very used to wearing head torches. Oh my gosh, they're massive! Oh my word, okay. So, our stove is a little diddly stove. Yes. I think we're pretty much gonna have burn one bit at a time. <laughs> Setting out all the big ones, because I'm gonna chop them smaller. This turned out to be our last log delivery. And though the wood chopping was pretty tiring, it's a process I really miss. I'm actually pretty sad thinking that unless we get another delivery of unusually large logs, next winter might not need any chopping. And so we kept hold of the last glimpses of the cold, making light of things that might usually frustrate us, like washing taking four days to dry. There was one last cold snap and it really went out with a blast. Finding these fell ponies in the last snow of the year felt really special. With the snow gone, spring colours just seemed to burst out snowdrops and daffodils brightening landscapes, lambs in the fields, buds sprouting and birds chirping, the smell of wild garlic wafting through the air. This was a really exciting period for us because we'd moved here just as the last leaves were falling from the trees. This was our first time really seeing the world come alive with life. And then came the sun. Do 
Cheers. Cheers. So then it got to the end of spring, mm -hmm. or like from Easter onwards, and we had these six solid weeks of sunshine. Mm, yeah. Everything just kind, kind of, of blossomed into sort of full bloom. The trees were sort of full on with leaves. It was really warm. We didn't have much rain at all either. We got so used to just continual sunshine. Cheers. Eating outside. <laughs> Reading outside. Sort of trying to work outside as much as we could. And everything sort of in the garden, sort of all the vegetables were really coming to life. And in terms of our lifestyle, this is when, as soon as that light opened up, the temperatures increased a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so having that time in the morning and also in the evening to go for walks sort of really extended the day. So it's 11 p.m., just getting dark properly. It just felt like a kind of time of opportunity that you have the whole landscape was sort of opening up again and coming to life. And a big thing was the lambs coming on. Oh, yeah. um, we, it was starting to get warmer, so we keep the windows open. The fields were filled with lamb. But they were so loud at night. <laughs> Endearing yeah. in the day, and then at night you'd be like, oh, shut and, up. And they, like the cattle on the fields as well. Yeah. And it cows, just it really felt as though the whole landscape just all of a sudden really started like blossoming with life and sounds. And you got these incredible golden hues in the morning and the evening. Lots of bugs starting to come out. Mm -hmm. You just see this kind of this haze of. Of like golden light with all these bugs little coming little midges out. In, the, in the light. These six weeks of sunshine were pure bliss. Just so easy and carefree. You completely forgot about the cold or any difficulties early in the year. Six weeks of solid sunshine. It didn't feel like it could ever end. From solid sunshine to solid rain. July and August ended up being some of the wettest on record. And the Lake District is one of the rainiest parts of the UK. And it wasn't just wet. There were high winds and temperatures dropped. But I guess you've just got to make the best of the situation. It was quite an interesting period because we got Lyme's disease from a bike trip to Scotland and we were quite content taking things slow. And after such a long dry patch, the rain brought so much vibrancy back to the landscapes. The parched streams were flowing again and there was this real beautiful dewy smell in the air. I do actually think the lakes are more fitting with moody atmospheric weather, so we just tried to embrace it. Ready, ready. <laughs> the lakes didn't seem to do things in half measures. It was six weeks of solid sunshine, six weeks of near constant rain, and now seven days of straight beautiful forecasts. Immediately those golden hues came back, bugs filled the air again and life just felt abundant. I've always found the end of summer to be quite a powerful time because you really are trying to cherish it for all it's worth, knowing soon the temperatures will drop, the days will shorten and the seasons will change. But for now we were just spending every moment we could outside going for plenty of rides before and after work and really trying to make the most of golden hour. It was also pretty incredible looking back at the progress in the garden. I can't claim too much credit for this, this really was Sarah's passion project. But it felt so nice thinking back to those early raised beds. It doesn't look that much now, but give it a little while, it'll be teeming with life. Going to potato day, planting them out, and now getting to enjoy them. So how are you feeling about our potato yield? Um, I was feeling pretty good about it until you commented on it. No, I've, I'm, I'm now. I am, I'm getting more and more impressed by the bucket. I don't know, maybe a crumble, I'm not sure how. Or a chutney? Yeah, or a chutney, I'm not sure how sweet they're gonna be, whether we'd wanna eat them raw. Do you wanna try? Okay. Oh. Wow, should sure we don't need to buy apples anymore. <laughs> and then came one of the biggest surprises. We thought we'd been hearing little meows around the garden, and turns out there were these two tiny feral kittens nested in one of the sheds, just occasionally poking their heads out. 
Really sadly, their mum got hit by a car a few weeks after we first noticed them. And so, Shabba and Natty have joined the family. Two beautiful kittens who are still very timid, but seem to like our company, or at the very least watching us from a distance. Slowly, we're winning their trust with the help of a lot of food. The cats were another thing that really made the house feel like a home so much more. Yeah, just as the seasons were sort of starting to change, it was getting a little bit colder. The thought of having two kittens at the house just felt quite cosy. Really nice. <laughs> so then we had this one last day of sunshine. It felt like the last day of summer, and we really wanted to use that to kind of yeah, scratch that summer itch and do the things that are really summery. So we put together a bit of a summer bucket list. Mm -hmm. We cycled up into the hills to go swimming in a tarn. And obviously you can do that any time of year, but not freezing your nips off. Yeah, it was really nice to have one last dip where it was like we felt warm and we weren't just like freezing the whole time and had to go with loads of layers. <laughs> and then on the way back home, we found some blackberries to eat by the side of the road, which for us, I really feel is like this summery real summery yeah. feel to it. And just as the sun was sort of starting to set, we were munching these blackberries and then made it home just to watch the last of the sunset. It was beautiful. Yeah, a really nostalgic end to the summer. And just as seasons really did feel like it was slowly getting a little bit cooler, days were getting shorter, seasons changing, summer slowly fading away. We used to wish summer would never end. But I think we realise now that it's each season that makes the others feel so unique and special. If it wasn't for winter, the summer wouldn't feel so warm. And if it wasn't for autumn, spring wouldn't feel so bright. And there's so much beauty in watching each season give way to the next. The constant change and noticing the subtle moments within it. Living here in the cottage, surrounded by so much nature, has really reminded us of that. So I hope you enjoyed our little insight into spring and summer in our little cottage. Yeah, it was nothing like we expected, but full of lots of adventures, new discoveries, and, adapting. And now I feel like we, we know what to expect yeah, going ahead we, into... We know what winter has in store for us. Winter and autumn. Thank you for watching, folks. Catch you next time. See ya. Bye.